battle weeds at your home or in your fields. Roundup branded herbicides are some of the most effective methods for controlling them. But what about their main active ingredient glyphosate? Is it harmful? And rats are fed GMOs and they get sick. And when I, what's going on? This is not possible. Mm -hmm. This is a very safe technology, the GMO technology, genetic engineering, and I used to speak publicly about it. And I dug a bit and realized after a few months that it had nothing to do with the technology. It was the pesticide that is sprayed on the GMO crops, on the food, that is actually causing the damage. How does it work? Give it a minute. The reality of the matter is the major factor in the GMOs is to make them more resistant to pesticides and herbicides so that the they, they get a higher yield on the crops, and which also means they spray heavier doses of pesticides and herbicides on these crops. And the plants that survive, the corn and the, the genetically modified corn and soybeans, they're soaking up this poison, and it's getting into our food supply. Glyphosate-based products were introduced in the 70s and became popular with farmers for the wide variety of weeds they help control and their history of safe use. In fact, in addition to the US EPA, regulatory agencies in more than 160 countries have approved and if you want to look at how it's harming our country, I'll assume you know something about biology and you know that fetuses and young children bodies are developing and that these poisons are going to have the most devastating effect on their development. And if you were to get a chart and track the rise, a dramatic rise of the GMOs and the pesticides and herbicides, it would match pretty much exactly the dramatic rise in autism and other nervous system diseases among our children. Here's how it works. Glyphosate is applied to weeds. Once absorbed, it travels to the roots, where it blocks a specific enzyme found in plants. Um, we do have pesticide, the glyphosate residues found in the foods. Um, the EPA, which sets tolerance levels for glyphosate residues in food, has been steadily increasing those tolerance levels at the request of Monsanto. Here's how it works. Glyphosate is applied to weeds. Once absorbed, it travels to the roots, where it blocks a specific enzyme found in plants, not animals or humans. Pesticide levels allowed in food are now higher than they have been in the past. And they have been, you know, scientists and others who are concerned because there are levels of glyphosate that are found in urine, that are found in mother's breast milk. Um, U.S. Ge Geological Society is found it in the water supplies. Um, so it is pretty prevalent now and there are a lot of concerns that you know that may be having an impact on human health. Um, glyphosate, well it's a very tiny molecule that was invented in 1950 then it reappeared it was patented again uh, as a demineralizer to clean up boilers and pipes in industry. Uh, when you dispose of the solution that you've made to clean up your pollen and you put it somewhere in nature, in, you know, in the forest or whatever, then my goodness, you realize that you've killed everything. All the plants and all the trees are dead. Well, somebody at Monsanto realized that there was uh, something there and they patented it very quickly as a herbicide. Then in 1996, uh, Monsanto introduced GMO crops that could be sprayed with it because that's what they engineered. They engineered basically tolerance to the herbicide and so now you can spray soybean and corn, you can spray all the big crops, sugar beet, canola, cotton and a few others. So it came into your food. Yeah. Yeah. But to spray it on the food, that's a new one, that's a different one. Not only that, but we have the with the spraying of the crops, the food crops, in from 1996, and very soon after, of a lot of other crops, which are sprayed just before harvest. Now, this is something most people don't know. The, all the grain crops and all the seed crops are sprayed just before harvest, so of course the residues are maximum. They're at peak at that point. Yeah. So when I say grain and seed crops, I mean wheat, mm -hmm. barley, rye. Critical, etc. Uh, it's called it's called desiccation. It's called chemical ripening. 
you know, the wheat that is in your loaf of bread was harvested two weeks ago, could be six months ago, but it really makes no difference. There's no, no difference. No expiry date on it. No. Uh, and then it's sprayed in the water for to control invasive weeds mm -hmm. in the water, which are annoying. It's sprayed in the forest, of course. It's sprayed in your garden. People mm -hmm. use it. It's sprayed on your driveway because, you know, there's weeds everywhere. And this is stuff is really, really working. Mm -hmm. It's not like it kind of controls some of the weeds. It controls all the weeds all the time. It really works.